hey, what's going on, guys? This is Edgar with AE Timber and Pine. And it seems like my most recent videos have all been kind of leading up to this particular project. I've recently showed you how to create custom SVGs using Carbide Create. I've also showed you how to align an image within the stripes of an American flag three different times, the third being the best one. I've also showed you how to merge that image within the stripes and also how to create a custom union in Carbide Create. So now we're gonna go ahead and put it all together for this one single project. So if you decide to follow along, make sure to take it slow, make sure to pause, and maybe even take some notes. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step on how to create this custom flag. The great thing about this project is that you can use the images that you wanna go ahead and use. They don't necessarily have to be the exact same ones that I am using. You can go ahead and use them if you find them online, but you could also pick any images that you want. If you like this particular design and don't wanna go through the process of creating it yourself, I do have it available on my Etsy shop. The link is in the description below. Also, if you're just starting out and are needing an American flag SVG, I have that available as well. I've already gone through the file and made sure that there is even space in between all the stripes so you're ready to go. If you decide to buy an American flag SVG somewhere else, that's fine. Just make sure that you have gone through the process of making sure that the stripes are all evenly spaced out. You are gonna wanna make sure that the flag is proportional all throughout. And lastly, I just wanna say thank you once more. Thank you for subscribing to the channel, liking the videos. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it. If you are getting value out of this content, go ahead and subscribe and like the videos and leave me a comment. I do try to respond to every single one as fast as possible, but you guys know how it is when you're a side hustler, you got the nine to five, you know, you have family life, and I try to get to you guys as fast as possible. But with all that said, let's just go ahead and jump into this video. Jumping into Carbide Create, the very first thing you're going to want to do, like always, is make sure your grid is to the dimensions of your actual material. So go ahead and update that and then import your flag SVG. Once I have the flag imported, I like to add an additional stripe to the top and to the bottom by selecting the stripe, copying it, and pasting it twice. I then grab the bottom right node and attach it to the top stripe here in the corner. I then grab the upper right node of the other stripe and attach it to the bottom stripe like so. Next group everything and then click on the align vectors option and click on align horizontally and vertically and this will center your flag. Once it's centered, you can go ahead and get a gauge on how big or how much more you need to resize the flag. So go ahead and resize your flag and you may have to repeat this a couple of times to get it just right, but you want the flag to basically cover as much space as you can here within your grid. By having the two extra stripes, you'll make sure that the first and the last stripes are proportional to the other stripes, specifically the pocketed stripes. Now with the flag properly sized, let's create the custom union. I found this Bass SVG free online simply by searching free Bass SVGs and I like this one. So go ahead and import your image and once imported, group it. Next, you're going to want to resize it. Once you get it to the size you like, make sure the image is selected and hold shift and click on the stars. With both the image and star selected, click on the align vectors option and click on align horizontally and vertically. This image is now centered within the stripes. I personally like for the top and bottom rows of the stars to be complete or untouched. So I will repeat this process until the image does not touch the stars. Once the image is where you want it within the stars, keep the image selected, ungroup the image, hold shift and click on the outermost vector, then group the image again. This will ungroup the outermost vector only while keeping everything else grouped. Next, select the outermost vector and click on the offset vectors option. We're going to create an outside offset at 0.20 inches. Next, select the stars, hold shift, and click on the outside offset. With both the offset and stars selected, click on Boolean subtraction and click OK. You will now see that the stars surrounding the image are deleted and you have your image perfectly within the stars. Now let's bring in the Elk SVG. This is a free SVG that I also found online. Once imported, make sure to group the image and resize your Elk or whatever it is that you're working with to your liking. Once you have it resized, we need to center the image to the stripes. To do this, select the image, hold shift, and click on the very first top stripe. Once those are selected, click on align vectors and click align horizontally. Once that is aligned horizontally, hold shift and click on the stripe to deselect it and click on align vertically. Now the image is centered within the stripes on the right hand side of the flag. Next, select the image and click on offset vectors and create an outside offset at 0.20 inches. With the offset created, you sometimes get extra offsets created within the image. The easiest way to remove all these extra offsets that you don't want is by holding shift and clicking on the outermost offset to deselect it. With it now deselected, you can delete the other extra offsets. 
At this point, make sure that your stripes are all grouped. Once grouped, hold shift and click on the offset. Once these are both selected, click on Boolean subtraction and click OK. You should see now that the stripes have been modified to go around your image. So you are now done creating the custom flag and all we have to do now is set up our toolpaths. When it comes to the toolpaths, I'm going to run four different toolpaths. The very first one that I'm going to run is an initial toolpath to be able to find the borders between the union and the stripes. Once I have those borders, I can then stand them. But let's take a look at the settings real quick that I use for this particular project. With the stripe selected, I selected an advanced V-carp and I enabled the area pocket tool and I'm going to use a one quarter inch end mill. This is going to be, the plunge and feed rate are going to be 80, 90 and the RPM is 18,000. I am going to use a 60 degree V-bit and the plunge and feed rate are 80, 90 as well and RPM is 18,000. The first initial pass is going to have a max depth of 0.02 inches. So go ahead and click OK. With the initial pass now complete, I'm able to see the borders between the union and the stripes. I went ahead and stained the union blue and pretty much this entire right hand side, everything that's stripes and elk area is all stained red. Once the stain was dry, I selected both the stripes and the elk and I used an advanced V-carve to carve this to the max depth of 0.04. So let's take a look at those settings. I again selected an advanced V-carve toolpath with a quarter inch end mill and the plunge and feed rate are 80, 90 and RPM is 18,000 again. The V-bit is going to be set up exactly the same, 80, 90, 18,000 RPM, and the max depth this time is going to be 0.04. Once the stripes and the elk were complete, I reset my Z0 over here in the union area to get me a perfect carve. Once my Z0 was set, I ran my advanced V-carve on the bass. Let's take a look at those settings real quick. I used a 201 end mill with the same settings as before, 80, 90, plunge and feed rate, RPM at 18,000, but this time around, I just used the default settings that Carbide Create populated for me here. So 12 and 45 at 18,000 RPM. It is a smaller image with finer lines, so I wanna make sure that I take it slow to avoid any tear out. To keep everything proportional, my max depth is set to 0.04. Once the bass is completed, I'll finish the flag running a V-carp for the stars. So let's take a look at those settings real quick. I used a 60 degree V-bit since it is a smaller flag. The plunge and feed rate, you guessed it, are 80, 90, and the RPM is 18,000. The max step was set to stock bottom or three quarter inch material. And go ahead and click OK. And now we can take a look at the simulation. And this is the outcome we should get once we're all finished up. So let's go ahead and send this to the machine.